Hey, Love Tribe. Thanks for tuning in to listen to today's podcast. We are thankful you guys are here to listen to Dr. Anne Bouchot, who is a licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in family issues and issues related to divorce. And today we talk about divorce, but even if you're not thinking about getting divorced, it's going to be a valuable episode because she talks a lot about getting relationship clarity and certainly some really important questions to ask yourself no matter where you're at in your relationship. Just to harp on what Chase just said, we did this interview based on an article that she wrote. And in that article, there are tons of questions that you can ask yourself. So if you're in this position where you're possibly thinking about divorce or separation, check out this article as well as listening to this podcast, because it might be very enlightening and might help you find some clarity if you're feeling confused or kind of lost in your relationship right now. And as always, we really appreciate you guys tuning in, subscribing to the show, telling your friends and family that helps us out, allows us to keep putting out these episodes and learning this great stuff uh, right along with you guys. So we appreciate it. And thank you for all the recent five-star reviews. You guys are killing it. And we really appreciate it because that means that our podcast gets more visibility, which means more listens, more downloads, and allows us to, to keep giving and bringing you this information. So thank you guys so much. Enjoy the show. Today's show is brought to you by our online course, Spark My Relationship. Create more passion, improve your communication, and build a stronger, more intimate connection with your partner in less than 90 days. We've collaborated with 15 therapists and psychologists to bring you the strategies marriage therapists teach their clients. To unlock a special offer only for I Do Podcast listeners, visit sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. That's sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. Hi, Dr. Boucher. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Today, we are going to focus in and talk about finding clarity in our relationships. And you wrote a great article that talked about finding clarity with your decision to divorce. And Sarah and I read it and thought it has a lot of great questions to ask yourself whether or not you're thinking about divorce with your partner. But if you're just doing like a relationship checkup, there's some valuable things to think about. And no one's relationship is perfect. So we wanted to be able to include kind of a wide range of a relationships, not just people thinking about divorce, but let's dive in and start with what are some things to ask ourselves to bring clarity to the status of our relationship? Well, first of all, I think a relationship of some duration that's not a marriage is going to be different than a marriage where there may be children and a divorce, which raises all kinds of other issues. But I, I think that if you're not happy in a relationship, then you have to stop and consider what the issues are that are troubling the relationship. So one issue to think about is, um, you know, how committed you are or how committed your partner is to the relationship. And if you are having doubts about that, that's certainly a question to explore together. I think that if a relationship has gone on for more than six months or a year and it hasn't moved past that kind of just getting to know you stage, I think most people know after six months or maybe a year whether the relationship is going to succeed or or whether it's not. It takes about six months, I think, to just get to know somebody pretty well. And so if people are still having trouble making a decision about committing to a relationship ship after six months to a year, then I think there are a lot of questions to start asking. What would be a couple examples of questions you can ask your partner if you're in that situation? Well, I would certainly ask how they see the relationship and if they see it moving forward in some way. Um, I would want to ask 
people what their vision is of their future together. Um, or if this is, you know, if this is sort of a serial monogamy kind of relationship. Um, I would want to ask if there are things in the relationship that are troubling either one or the other person and whether they can be talked through. I think a lot of times people don't bring up, you know, serious concerns in relationships. Like I was just talking to someone who was complaining about her um, boyfriend's lack of libido. That's, and she had not brought it up with him. That's a serious concern. I want to highlight the value in having these conversations because I'm just thinking back to Sarah and I's courtship and early in the relationship. And we never, things were good and healthy, but we never really paused and, and kind of took the time. You know, it doesn't have to be on the second date obviously, but let's say six months in and, and say, hey, where do you see this relationship going? Like explicitly asking that. It, it's like a, it's a, it's such a grown up thing to do to, to <laughs> you know, to like get clear. We were 21 at the time, 22, which is not an excuse. I wish I had someone telling me this, like, hey, you feel conflicted about the relationship or this or that. And here's how you need to communicate it with your partner, because we would have been in a much better place than in, in probably just as a relationship went on. Yeah, I think it's nice to make a habit of having check ins and they don't have to. I mean, I think people can be afraid of these kinds of conversations because they either are afraid to say what's on their mind or they're afraid to hear what the other person might have to say. But I think if you um, set up um, a routine of check-ins with the other person to see how are we doing, what's going well, what could be improved. That's a healthy habit to start to set up. And early on too, because otherwise the problems tend to pile up and um, resentments pile up. And if they're not talked about and if they're just swept under the rug, then you start, you could start to make assumptions about how the other person feels or what the future looks like. And those assumptions may or may not be true. And all of that just is toxic to a relationship. In doing that early on, like six months in is important. But if you're listening to this and you've never done that, it's never too late. Like do it. And Sarah and I didn't start really doing that until we started the podcast really to learn these tools of of checking in and explicitly having these conversations. We had adult conversations and we communicated well, but not n with all the tools that we have now to think about what it is we want, how to, and how to communicate that with our partner. Right. Right. It's not, you're right. It's never too late to do that. I think it's a good idea. And if it's been years and you want to start to bring that up with a partner now, you can say, hey, I've been thinking about this. Um, would you be open to having this conversation? And just as a check-in, um, it's not threatening that way. It's, it, I think because people are afraid of conversations that they anticipate will be difficult, it's important to present it in a constructive, not threatening way. So you mentioned um, earlier that the finding clarity when it comes to a divorce of a marriage can be different than just a long-term relationship because there's a lot more involved. So how would you advise somebody who is looking for clarity specifically in a divorce situation? What would be kind of the first steps that they could ask themselves or that they need to do to help them in this situation? Well, that's a good question. And I want to start by saying that in a divorce, there's usually so much more at stake. Um, if their finances have been merged, there's law that applies to marriage and divorce. And if there are children involved, so there's just a whole lot more at stake. And that's why I said that it's different than a breakup of an unmarried relationship. Not that that can't be extremely difficult and a hard decision to make. So. The questions to start asking um, yourself is, 
uh, one question would be, what what specifically is troubling you? Have you begun to think about life without your spouse? Have you begun to imagine that you are out of this relationship? And what does that bring up for you? For some people, it might bring up, you know, a kind of terror and a desire to work on things. And for other people, it might bring up a sense of dread or even relief. Um, I would also You know, one important question is to ask whether, ask yourself if you really feel like you've made the efforts that need to be made to sustain a relationship, to keep a relationship alive. If if you haven't done that, then that would be something to work on. If your partner has begun to distance him or herself, then then it's important to have that conversation with the partner. and find out what what has been going on. Sometimes it's an acute issue, like an affair, something that has just recently come up. And sometimes it's a long term problem of, you know, lack of communication, irreconcilable goals, um, you know, real deep differences in how you view money and how you view uh, parenting. Um, does that that sort of cover some of the questions? Yeah, yeah. I want to go back to the question to ask yourself of, have I made the efforts to sustain the relationship? Because I've realized in Sarah and I's relationship, there's been ups and downs. And I've looked to an easy solution or Sarah needs to change in order for the relationship to be better. When the more valuable thing to do is to ask myself, what what have I done to improve the relationship? And, and recently realize that I wasn't doing a whole lot and that we had actually, despite having a podcast on relationships, really neglected some key things in our relationship. Specifically, we had our daughter Stella four years ago and we realized like, obviously that just completely changes your life and our relationship has completely changed. And we were really disconnected because we weren't having the same time for connection with our conversation. So long story short, we finally took our first vacation away from our daughter uh, for three nights, actually last weekend from the time of recording this. And, and it was like, <laughs> thank Man. you. And it was like so great for our relationship and kind of a, a an eye opener of like how life happens fast. And we have, a, we have this podcast and relationships and the maintenance of them are always on our minds. But despite that, because we're busy, because we both have careers and we have a daughter, we've just not done the work that we needed to. So I just want to reiterate how important that is to ask yourself that and really be honest with yourself. And because likely we haven't made the efforts, not to not to downplay the people that really are doing the work, but the reality is, is uh, probably more often than not, we haven't done the things that we need to do to nurture the relationship. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think people are very quick to jump to blaming the other person um, for not meeting their needs or for, you know, doing something that they don't like. Um, And if you can stop and ask yourself, what is it that you're doing to to support the relationship? That's, you know, that requires some pretty honest introspection. Um, I think nothing changes a relationship as much as having kids. I mean, that's just huge life changing um, for the whole family. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that you took this vacation. And my recommendation would be a weekly date night where you just agree not to talk about your daughter. <laughs> you just agree that you're going to talk about everything else, but not your daughter. It's very easy to slip away from each other by both of you focusing on your child that you both love and the relationship starts to um, be neglected that way. Absolutely. And we had uh, Figs O'Sullivan on a couple of weeks ago and he highlighted 
the fact that when you have a kid, your attachment uh, to the kid comes into the picture, which changes your attachment with your partner. And there's just all sorts of things going on that even Sarah and I being somewhat aware, obviously, our daughter's changing our lives, but not realizing how drastically it is changed Sarah and I's relationship. It just does. And uh, to all you parents out there, check in. Hopefully you've done it already. But if not, really uh, take some time to to be introspective and think about how your relationship has changed from the kids. It was really kind of an eye opener for, for myself. Well, there's another side to that also, which is it's really good for your child to know that your relationship is a priority. And I think it, you can't start too early to show your child that your marriage is a primary relationship. It's not just about being parents. I remember I had a client once who told me that for as far back as she could remember, her parents had taught their kids that Sunday mornings was parent time. And they set aside Sunday morning for the parents to do whatever it was they were going to do. And they always had a sitter so that they could spend Sunday morning together. And the kids grew up knowing that the parents were making their relationship a priority. So it's, it's a benefit to kids to know that. It's a benefit to kids to have that security that their parents' relationship is solid. I'd like to add in regards to our trip that we just did, it was really nice because when you don't spend that quality time or you go a very long time without having that quality time together, you really forget the the fun that you do have together when you're doing activities that you used to do or that you enjoy doing together. And it kind of rekindles a spark of how or those feelings that you had in the beginning of the relationship that really made you realize why you fell in love with your partner. And so I think for me, this past weekend was just like a fresh, um, I don't know what the word is. Reinvigoration. Reinvigoration. Yeah. Of our relationship and, um, and how nice that that can be. Yeah. Re-energizing the relationship, Mm -hmm. but I hope you don't wait another four years to do it again. I hope that you make a habit of even just, you know, a half hour walk around the block when you can be alone and not talk about your daughter, <laughs> you know, to be alone and focus on each other. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big, long weekend away. It, could, it should be a kind of a daily practice, even if it's just 20 minutes or half an hour of connecting just the two of you. That's exactly what we said on the way home. It's not going to be another four years before we do this again. Great. Good. Good. And, you know, what we're really talking about is marriage maintenance as opposed to how you know that you're ready to separate or divorce. But that is one of the things that can lead to divorce is just disconnecting so much from the relationship, disconnecting from your partner and forgetting why you married him or her. What happens is a snowball effect, because when that starts to happen, you start to feel like your needs aren't being met in the relationship. And it's pretty natural to start either fantasizing or maybe even acting on, um, on um, desires to have someone else meet those needs. That's how betrayals happen or emotional affairs happen. Um, or even just distancing from the marriage and hanging out with your friends, doing what you like to do with your friends, which meets your needs in a way that maybe your your spouse no longer is. So that's part of the conversation to have is what needs are being met and what needs are not being met and how, you know, how can we change that? It's an important thing to think about and communicate with your partner. And I don't, want to turn this to to divorce in a negative way, because I think it is positive to think about some of these questions that you you highlight in in your article about getting clarity on if you should divorce. And another thing you say to to ask yourself is how you think your life will look if you do divorce, like going through that thought exercise. Can you talk a little bit about that? Let's take a break to talk about today's sponsors. 
Today's episode is sponsored by Iconic, where you can shop name brand glasses, contacts, and sunglasses for the best possible price. Iconic seamlessly connects your eyewear, your vision insurance coverage, and your doctor's expertise with their network of over 38,000 eye doctors. Yeah, Chase and I got two pairs of glasses from Iconic, and the process is super cool. They have this try-on tool where you can try on any pair on their website and see how they actually look on your face before you buy them. So no need to go to the stores to try on all the different frames. You can do it right from the comfort of your home. So enjoy the view and visit iconic.com slash I do. That's iconic, E-Y-E-C-O-N-I-C dot com slash I do to shop over 60 high quality name brands, including Nike, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and AccuView. And definitely get glasses, but even if you don't want to try this tool, cause it's super cool. <laughs> we were like just playing with it. For it looks fun. like you're wearing the glasses <laughs> yes. um, through the tool. So check that out and get free shipping and returns, price matching and complimentary frame adjustment. Plus save up to $220 when you apply your insurance. If you don't have insurance, use a code I do to get 10% off your entire order. Iconic is looking out for your eyes. Today's episode is also brought to you by Zola. We all know planning a wedding can be super stressful. I was lucky that Sarah did most of the planning <laughs> and I just all said the heavy yes lifting. <laughs> to everything. So it wasn't too stressful for me. But if you're planning, it can be stressful. And that's why Zola wants to help you take the stress out of wedding planning with free wedding websites, the easiest wedding registry, affordable invite suites, and more. And if you're planning a fall wedding, it is time to order your invites in day of paper. I've mentioned before on the show that I have a wedding planning business in Costa Rica, and I always recommend Zola to our brides, especially for their invites in day of paper. And Zola has just added thousands of invite designs for every style and color scheme. And as most of my brides are planning a destination wedding, they don't want to break their budget by spending a ton on on their save the dates and invites. So Zola's friendly prices are always a win. And not only can you order invites and print your guest addresses for free on free envelopes, but you can manage your headcount with their free, easy guest list manager tool. Sign up at Zola.com slash I do to get 30% off your invites and paper order. That's Zola, Z-O-L-A dot com slash I D-O and get 30% off your invites and paper order. Zola.com slash I do. Yes. So my experience is that most people have pretty unrealistic expectations about how their life is going to look. Um, I had one client say to me, I just want a new life and a new wife. And it's just not that simple. Um, most people are pretty shocked that um, the the losses that you experience with divorce are, are more intense, more painful, and maybe not so expected. And so it's it's good to have a, a realistic picture of how your life is going to change Um and what your life is really going to look like, separating out the fantasy from the reality. So I just wrote another article in Psychology Today specifically about that, the losses that most people either don't expect or don't expect to be so difficult. Um, and that's the conversation I like to have with people when they're thinking about divorce is what do you think it's going to look like? Are you thinking about what your finances are going to look like? How is it going to be to only see your kids some of the time, not be able to tuck them in every night. What's it going to be like to have to go back to work and support yourself? Um, what, you know, what, what new relationship do you have fantasies about? And what is the reality um, of how that might or might not happen? So there, there are a number of other losses that I think I list in that article. It's easy to think the grass is greener on the other side. I feel like when we're presented with a, a, a problem, like you said, we, we tend to not talk about it. And so then we, we can fantasize about 
oh, if my partner, if I just had another partner and it would be like this and really taking a step back and having the clarity to, to go through these things of what it would really look like and being honest with yourself uh, is an important exercise. That's right. Um, people do have fantasies and people do tend to take the same problems from one relationship into the next. The statistics, the divorce statistics are kind of depressing for second and third marriages because they go up. Um, you know, we're somewhere between 41 and 50 percent of first marriages divorce. It's more like 63 percent for second marriages and something like 75 percent for third marriages. So what that tells me is that people are carrying the same um, problems they brought into their first marriages into their subsequent marriages. And if they don't figure those out, how they contributed to the breakdown of the marriage, then subsequent marriages are probably going to have pretty serious problems too. Another important question you tell people to ask themselves is what keeps you in the marriage? And this is almost like the flip side of what it would look like out of the marriage. Can you talk a little bit about this? Sure. So if you ask people what keeps them in the marriage, sometimes it's that they're still in love with this person and they are just hoping that things will change. But very often, if there have been serious problems and that's what they, they've come to me to talk about, it's fear that's keeping them in the marriage. or it's fear of the change, fear of losing time with their children, fear of being alone, fear of financial losses, and um, or sometimes it's just the indecision. They're just stuck. They just don't know how to make the decision. And so they just sort of go from one day to the next, trying to survive one day at a time without an idea of how to resolve the problem either by fixing the marriage or making a decision to leave. So someone is asking themselves these questions and they're trying, you know, they're going through the visualization, hopefully going to counseling. Ultimately, that's going to be one of the more valuable things you can do. And then you talk about a moment of clarity and that can go in either direction, whether it's clarity for divorce or not getting divorced. Can you talk about what that looks like when you're working with people? Sure. Um, I think what I've known that really gets people is the question of, you know, how long do you think you can um, go on living this way if nothing changes? That question is something that most people haven't asked themselves because they're really living in the moment. And when they start to project ahead about their lives six months, a year, five years from now, that can actually lead them to that moment of clarity. They can't go on living this way. It's some, something is going to have to give. And that brings them to the decision of they either have to leave because they're hopeless and they feel they've tried everything and there's nothing more that they can do, or to a decision to somehow put the marriage back together, whether that's through counseling or um, through just hard work with their spouse, maybe counseling, individual counseling or, or marital counseling. But there's that moment when, and I've seen this with people so many times where they could go for years being unhappy in a relationship. And then at some point it's, they come to that place where they know they can't do it anymore. It has to change in some way. And that is, you know, that physical feeling of, you know, sometimes it's just like a jolt, um, you know, a jolt and a, um, a gut reaction that says something has to give here. Do you ever work with clients where they try a separation before a divorce? And if so, sure. what does that look like for some couples? So um, about 13% of couples who separate actually reconcile. So that's kind of a startling statistic because it tells you that a lot of people will say, I just want a trial separation. But, you know, what is that? 87% of those people will go on to divorce. Um, 
So, but sometimes separation is necessary. Sometimes you need respite um, from a lot a high conflict in a in a relationship, and maybe that separation with a commitment to work on the marriage can lead to a reconciliation. I just finished writing a book about nesting, which I think is a good way to have a separation if that's what you want to do. Nesting means that the children stay in the home and the parents rotate in and out. And while they are rotating in and out, they're having less contact with each other. So the conflict is reduced and they're buying time to decide whether they want to divorce or whether they want to reconcile. And if they decide they want to reconcile, it gives them the time to work on it and to come up with a plan about how to um, rebuild the marriage. So certainly there's going to be a wide array of circumstances and, and kids are involved, how long you've been married and the issues that are, that are there. Uh, obviously like, like you said, an acute one being betrayal and affair. But I feel like it it might be a little bit more difficult for someone in a position where they're frustrated, they're they're thinking about divorce or separation, but there's not something acute. It's just like an accumulation of a lot of things or they're just not feeling, like you said, like a, they feel this jolt. What would you tell someone in that position to think about? Well, a lot of times, you know, many times people will say we've just grown apart. We have nothing to talk about. Um, you know, I'm bored or I just don't feel loved anymore or I feel like I've fallen out of love or, you know, they, those are not acute. They're real, but they're not acute. And um, it's tough because at some point people who say, well, we've just grown apart that moment of clarity will come when they feel such a deep need to have some more excitement in their life, some more novelty, some more adventure, something that makes them feel more alive. And when the marriage feels like it's kind of dying or dead, then it's very easy for people to start to imagine um, what life would be like if they were separated. That moment of clarity, it, it can happen because they come to a realization that it's possible to have a different kind of life. It's, they realize that it's possible to have a different kind of relationship, to have maybe a friendship with, with someone who is actually meeting their needs in a way that their spouse no longer is or maybe never did. So it isn't. It doesn't necessarily take an acute um, situation like an affair to bring on that moment of clarity. I think people who are in marriages and have just been feeling empty for a long, long time can still come to that moment of clarity when they realize they either need or can or realize they can have something quite different. Where do you see different relationship? containers coming in. So like polyamory or ethical non-monogamy, because it you mentioned that like a feeling that they want their needs met by by someone else or novelty. And this is more and more seems like it's becoming a part of the conversation. Do you think about these different uh relationship containers? Um yes, I I do. I don't think they work out very well most of the time. The polyamory or the open marriages, they generally don't work out most of the time. And that's usually because one person is dissatisfied and the other person um, doesn't see that as the solution. So um, that, that's usually a big point of tension in a relationship. And I had people come in where, let's say, husband is really interested in joining a polyamory group and he really wants his wife to join with him, but she has no interest in this. And ultimately she puts down an ultimatum that says, you know, either we are married or we're not married, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to have a, a kind of open marriage in that way. That's more typical of what I see. 
I suppose there are some times when it works, but I don't believe it works long term for most people. There is another oh, there's another piece, though, which is um, a, a term that I've heard recently that's something like a companion marriage and that's um, or a parenting marriage. And that's an agreement that you stay together with your spouse to parent your children or because you simply can't afford to divorce. But then you, if, if you can agree to some ground rules about what that's going to look like, I think that is something that can work a little bit more easily. It has to be quite out in the open and, and it has to be really that both people have to buy into the idea. So someone is asking themselves these questions. They're, they're trying to find clarity and they they they're just stuck they cannot figure out what it is they need to do like one day they're like i need to get a divorce the next they're they're back being confused what would you tell someone in that position <laughs> um I don't, I don't think I could tell them anything. I think I would be asking questions about where that confusion is coming from. Um, are there signs of hope? And if so, can, can, that, is that, can that be rekindled? Um, what is it that's... I, I guess I would want to know what is underlying that confusion. And I think very often it's the fear. Um, so I would want... Again, I'd ask questions. Have you tried everything have you left no stone unturned have you what what do you think needs to change to restore the marriage or what do you think you would need to know in order to leave the marriage um what would you have to believe what would you have to think in order to leave the marriage uh and again sometimes questions or talking about what life would really look like post divorce is enough to help people make that decision and sometimes it just takes time. You know, I think I don't think there's a specific timeline. Some people just need to sit on it for a long time until they've really figured it out. And that's not a bad thing because they're less likely to have regrets later if they feel like they've taken the time to really think things through. Well, Dr. Bouchot, that is a great place to end. Some great questions for someone that's listening to ask themselves. Because I imagine if you're in that limbo area, it's got to be extremely tough and definitely seeking help through therapy, asking yourself these questions uh, is a good place to start. So thank you for sharing this information. Let's wrap up by having you tell our listeners where they can find you online and then we'll say goodbye. Well, let's see. Thank you for having me. First of all, I have a website. It's www.drannbusho.com. I'm also on Instagram under collaborative divorce because I try to help people divorce without going to court. That's my primary interest. And um, I am also on Facebook under divorce options. If people search divorce options, Marin, but there are also divorce options in every, uh, in many, many areas of California and the country where people can learn about different divorce process choices um, that's how they'll find me. Excellent. We'll have all those links on the podcast description and on our website at idopodcast.com. And thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're so welcome. And thank you. Hi guys. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, all the links are in the show notes page, as well as on the podcast description. And while you're on our website, we encourage you guys to check out our 14 day happy couple challenge. We send you an email for 14 days with simple doable challenges to help strengthen and improve your relationship. And on our website, we also have a bunch of free resources for your relationship. So we encourage you to check those out. Uh, we also have our love tribe on Facebook. Uh, we encourage you guys to join the tribe and uh, be there for support for each other. If you have questions or just need some relationship advice, we are all here for each other. Um, the group has grown to almost a thousand people um, and we love it. So we hope you guys join that. You can go to Facebook, 
Love Tribe Fam, and you'll find us right there. And if you are interested in learning more about our flagship course, Spark My Relationship, we hope you guys check it out. We have a special offer that is only for podcast listeners. So you can go to sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock and you can unlock that special offer and learn more as always thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week